Good morning in the morning, everybody. Look at this beautiful snail. Wow. Now, most people wouldn't go out on a rainy day to film, but the great part about filming on an overcast rainy day is that everything looks so much more contrasty and vivid and overall creates a moodier look, which I really like. So we can use that to our advantage to create a cinematic video with our iPhone. Before we get started, let's talk about the camera settings. So I'm using the iPhone 14 Pro and I'll be shooting everything on the default camera app. I like to shoot my B-rolls in 4K 60 frames per second. 4K just provides a higher quality and 60 frames per second allows me to slow down the footage, which not only creates a dreamy look, but will also make the shakes less apparent because I'll be shooting everything handheld. Now I'm just gonna do a little bit of location scouting just to see where we can film. Okay, so something else to mention is before you start shooting, you want to lock your exposure and white balance because if you don't do that, your colors and exposure will change during your recordings and that will completely ruin your shot. And it's also pretty hard to fix it in the edit. So right now we're in the default camera app. I have my settings set to 4K 60 frames per second. And right now it's set to auto. So as I tilt up, you can see that the exposure shifts. And as I tilt down, you can also see that the color changes from a more warm tone to a blue tone. And you don't want that in your video. So in order to lock your exposure and white balance, you can simply tap hold on the screen and AEAF lock will appear, which means your auto exposure and white balance has been locked. And you can see as I move up and down with the camera, you can see that the exposure and the white balance doesn't change in your shot. Now, unfortunately, your focus is also locked. You can't separate exposure from focus using the default camera app. For that, you will need to use a professional video app like Filmic Pro. Now, depending on the camera movement you do, if it's like a push-in shot or a slide shot, sometimes you can get away by leaving it in auto. But for camera movements where you tilt up the camera or going from a dark place into a more brighter area, it's better to lock your exposure and white balance. So yeah, keep that in mind and let's move over to the five pro tips I have for you guys. So my first tip is to create depth in your video. Now, because smartphones have small sensors, this is a bit more challenging to achieve, but the easiest way to do this is to get close to the object or subject you're filming. So in my case, I used this tree to create a sort of rotation shot. And by getting close to the branch, I was able to create some depth, making it look more cinematic and three-dimensional. The next tip I have for you is to add transitions to your video. And one of the easiest transition is the whip transition, where you basically whip in one direction in the first shot and then whip in the same direction in the second shot. And because there's a little bit of motion blur, it will also make the transition more seamless. Now it's sometimes difficult to get the focus right on the second shot. So what I usually do is I first set the focus to where the end point is and then sort of do everything in reverse where I pull back and then create the whip transition. And then in the edit, I simply reverse that shot and then you get a nice seamless transition with an accurate focus at the end. To make your videos come alive and make the transition effect more powerful, it is important to include the right music and sound effects. Not only does it set the atmosphere of your video to create that cinematic quality, but it also helps tell the story better and make the viewer feel as if they were truly in the moment. That is where our sponsor of today's video, Artlist, comes in. All of the music and sound effects used for the cinematic video you saw were from Artlist. They have a wide range of royalty-free music and sound effects with unlimited downloads that you can use in any of your video projects. One of the biggest challenges as a content creator myself is finding the right music for your video. However, Artlist has one of the best intuitive search functions, making it easy to find the right soundtrack for your video. They include categories where you can choose the mood, video theme, genre, and instrument for your music. What's great is that I can see the waveform of each track, which gives me a good idea of how the music will sound. Furthermore, I can also find similar songs to the one I selected to get even more options. When it comes to sound effects, 
products. Again, I can choose between different categories like ambience, realistic, foley, and more to narrow down my choices. By building a library of high quality sound effects, you can use them for future projects and build an entire atmosphere around your video to make it look and feel more cinematic. Now, I worked out the special deal with Artlist where you can get two months additionally for free using the link in the video description below. So make sure to give it a try. Once again, I wanna thank Artlist for supporting this channel. With that said, let's continue. My next tip, which is a pretty cool effect you can create is a rack focus. So a rack focus is basically shifting focus from one subject to another. In this case, I set the focus to the runner and then gradually shifted the focus towards the snail, which helps shift the viewer's uh, attention from one point to another. And this is a pretty cool effect that you can create that you also see in Hollywood movies. By simply tapping on the subject you want to later focus on, it will gradually do that focus shift for you. Having steady camera movement is something really important that you should do, especially when you're filming handheld. Even though the iPhone 14 Pro has great image stabilization, camera shakes can still occur. Now the iPhone does have action mode, but because we're in a low light situation right now, it's not really the best mode to use. And the standard video by itself does a great job at stabilizing the footage. However, you wanna to work together with your body in order to get the smoothest camera movement possible. And what I like to do is keep the camera close to my body and then slightly bend my knees and then walk heel to toe in a constant speed. And by doing that, your videos will already look much better and you might not even need a gimbal. Now, I didn't want to use the ultra wide angle lens for this shot, even though it would help emphasize the camera movement, but the standard wide lens just provides the better quality. And what I did is that I had two trees closer to the camera because as I create the push forward movement, it will emphasize the camera movement and create a more dynamic shot. My next tip is to include a subject in your video. This can be anything from a snail to one of your friends or even yourself. And just by including a subject in your video, you can make it much more interesting and engaging. And with a smartphone, you can get really creative with it and find things that are lying around to keep your phone steady. Static shots can also be very powerful. In that one shot, I placed my phone low to the ground and set the focus on the dead branch so that I'm out of focus as I move into the frame, and which also creates an interesting shot. And then I created a wide shot at the end just to give more context and let the viewers know where the scene takes place. And just because you're filming yourself doesn't mean that all of your shots have to be static. You can, for example, create a selfie shot. And what I did is I actually moved in the opposite direction to create that sort of parallax effect. So as my camera was moving to the left, I rotated with my head to the right, creating this sort of parallax effect, which is pretty cool. So now that we have all of our shots, let's put all of the clips together to create the final video. So I hope you enjoyed that short cinematic sequence I did here in the forest. And I highly recommend you practice and go out, especially on a rainy day like this, you can get some really nice moody shots. And if you're interested in the colors I used for the final video, they are from my premium mobile LUTs, which include 10 LUTs that you can instantly apply to your mobile videos to make them pop more. I will leave a link in the video description below. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful and got some ideas on how you can create your own cinematic video with your smartphone. And hopefully you can use those techniques for yourself to create better videos. So I recommend you go out and search for a forest nearby to practice those different shots. Now, if you're interested in learning more and want to shoot professional and cinematic video with your smartphone, make sure to head over to smartphonefilmmaking.com, which is my online course teaching you everything I know about smartphone filmmaking. 
filmmaking. And guys, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. So it's starting to rain now, so I better head back home. I wish you all a great week. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.